Hey everyone, this is Arjen here and welcome to the second episode of my new LEGO train automation project. The first episode was already uploaded a year ago. I um, just renamed it to episode one and the link is in the description if you're curious and it was about a special control system for LEGO trains. And the thing was to put as many trains as possible on one loop and um, the problem is that eventually trains are gaining in on each other and to prevent head to tail collisions the system parks a train on the side track that you see here. Well the proof of concept did work very well so I'm now using a bigger layout as you can see and it'll have in total three stations where trains can be parked. Here's one, behind there is one and the third one is over here. So I'm now busy with setting up the control system and putting everything into place. But like any other project, I'm running into some trouble. And it has to do with this control system that you see here. This is an Arduino Mega. And there are two motor control modules, which control the switch motors that you see there. And also the tracks. And um, the problem is that the wires to the sensor is becoming too long. I've had this problem before and it's mainly this sensor here which is connected all the way here to that controller which is about 3 meters of wire length. And I tried different solutions. First I tried different sensors. I tried the... let me get it into focus now like that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I tried different uh, sensors. First I tried some sensors from Deal Extreme, which were utterly rubbish, really bad, bad things. Um, and then I stumbled on these sensors, and these work pretty well. And they're from Sharp on a um, Pololu, or Pololu, I don't know, uh, module. And they work pretty well. The problem actually is that the wire is picking up some interference and I tried different things. I tried filters, ferrite cores, um, shielded wires like this one, but I can't figure it probably out what the problem is. So I contacted also the supplier, the manufacturer of these sensors and they told me that, well, yeah, usually these kind of sensors are used in like photocopier devices, printers, you name it. And the wire length in these particular devices isn't very long. So he said like, that's your problem as well, that the wire is too long. And he didn't have a real solution for it. And since I already tried several things, it's a bit difficult to make it all work. So what now? Well, there is one option of course, and that is to split that control unit that you see there into two separate units so I can have a unit over here and another unit over here that controls this track and that means that the sensor wire length from this control unit is only like one meter and that's enough because the, all the other sensors that you see here are working just fine so that's what I'm gonna do, but it's a bit of a pity since I already constructed the control modules for the other stations as well. So I need to throw away like a days of work and that's a pity because time is not on my side. Um, the other thing is that I'm gonna use six Arduinos now instead of three. The advantage is that I can use the normal Arduinos and not the Megas that I used here. Um, I use the Megas because I'm using the interrupt function on a Arduino. And the normal Arduino has only two interrupt functions. And the Mega has four and I need two interrupt functions per sidetrack. So that'll fit. So that'll fit also in a normal Arduino when I only use one sidetrack. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. And that's also the reason, by the way, that I'm using these kind of sensors. Because you have also 
the analog sensors, but analog sensors can be used in combination of interrupt functions inside the controller. And I like to use the interrupt functions since they work very well for me. I could use analog sensors, but then the program would be different. It would be slower, bigger, stuff like that. I don't like them, so I want to stick to the sensors. And I'll just have to make the wires shorter. So that's what I'm going to do. And next episode will be about showing you something that works, obviously with smaller Arduinos. So hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.